All right, it's time for another update and forecast on the Oak Fire in Mariposa County. Throughout this video, we're going to look at what the conditions on this fire were like throughout the day today. I'll update you on all the recent numbers as well as some important updates when it comes to our evacuation orders. We're also going to see where there is still some heat on this fire. And then we're also going to check out the fire weather conditions to predict where this fire is going to go in the future. And finally, we'll take a good look at the air quality forecast as well. So just starting off, we'll just look at the camera that we have been looking at throughout the entire lifetime of this fire. Usually every time we look at this time lapse, there's huge smoke columns coming up right here, some pyrocumulus clouds. But looking at a six hour time lapse throughout the day today, you wouldn't even be able to tell a fire was out here. Now, big disclaimer there, that doesn't mean that the fire is out by any standards, but it just shows us that the camera that was showing the most activity over the last four days wasn't showing all that much activity today. And if we back up this time lapse, you can actually see one indication of why. You notice a lot more clouds up here than we were seeing in previous days. Actually, previous days we didn't really have, really have any clouds at all. And although we did still have some dry conditions this afternoon, it wasn't as dry as the last few days due to some of that moisture that was moving into the Sierra. Now, the bigger part of the story though is all the great work that's been done by Cal Fire on this fire. And as I give you some of the updates, you'll see some of the nice progress that they actually have made. Now, if we wanna look, that actually does show there is some parts of this fire still burning, unlike what that time lapse was showing. This is the satellite imagery throughout the day today. And if you look closely, I, actually I could zoom in here you can see where there's still some smoke coming off of this fire significantly less than in previous days though. I believe it was three days ago where we just had a giant pyrocumulus plume coming off of this. The smoke was reaching all the way up to Tahoe and it just looked like the most extreme behavior that we'd seen all season. This definitely looks like the fire is still burning out there, but not nearly as extreme as it has been. Now, another way we can actually look at this is natural color fire. And if you look closely at the satellite imagery picks up the hot spot, and you can see it, you can actually somewhat make out the burn scar right there. And then if you look very closely, you can see where it's still picking up some of that heat. From that indication, it looks like it's on the northeastern section of the fire still. But we have another map that'll show, that'll confirm that a little bit better later in the video. But first I do just wanna go over what I think is the most important information that I've seen throughout the last couple of days. Again, didn't do an update yesterday. I usually take Mondays off because I work four shifts over the weekend at the station. But key things that I see in this timeline right here. One, some evacuation orders have been reduced to warnings in the last hour. And then that's a trend that we see throughout all these updates right here. This is on Watch Duty, one of the best apps. I definitely suggest getting this and setting the notifications on for the counties around where you live. Would have been a great thing for, for me to have when I was living up in the mountains because it tells you just right when a fire starts and then you could set notifications for that fire and it tells you every time there's a new update. Now, I did want to read this update right here, though. This was July 25th at 7.37 p.m. This was their evening update. It was when it was at 17,000 acres, 16% contained, 21 residences destroyed, 34 outbuildings destroyed, still 2,400 structures threatened. But here's the key sentence. Successful day today with minimal growth and almost 3,000 personnel assigned. Then if we go to the very top, so it's the most recent ones, it has the recent numbers. We'll look at the official CAL FIRE numbers for that though. And I do just wanna see that. Good progress continues with minimal heat in lush meadows and surrounding communities. Full update on the CAL FIRE website. So let's check out the CAL FIRE website. Looks like it's at 18,532 acres and 26% contained. In my last update, I believe it was at 15,000 acres. In my video, I accidentally read it as 5,000. That's why I remember it was 15,000. And we had 0% containment. So we've seen that jump up to 26% contained within the last couple of days. And then if we wanna look at the personnel, that was something else we saw increase in those updates down there. 
Now we have 24 helicopters on it, 286 engines, 94 dozers, 68 water tenders, and over 3,000 personnel with 66 crews. So Cal Fire just threw everything they had at this fire. Now this is where some of the bad news comes in. This has been updated since the last video. I believe in the last video it said 10 structures destroyed. It does look like we are now up to 41 structures destroyed. Now where some of the good news comes in is, although there are still a number of evacuation orders in place, and if those orders are still in place, that means it's closed off, don't, don't try to go back up there. But we were seeing multiple reports that the some evacuation orders were being lifted. And I believe most of those were on the southern edge of the fire where we haven't seen that much activity. As always though, when it comes to evacuation orders, never take my word for it. I put the link in the description of this video. So that's where you should go for evacuation type information. For me, what we can do is just look at kind of where the hot spots are on this fire pick up or and then forecast where we think this growth is going to be over the next few days. One thing that we can do first though is check out where the growth actually was the last couple days. Kind of a better thing to do before you forecast growth is to see where that growth has been. So this was actually we could just start from the beginning. That was growth on I believe the 22nd. That red color is on the 23rd. If we want to see the 24th Notice that it's a different color there, but most of that new growth up on the northeastern section right there. So flashing it on and off, you can see where the growth was before and then where that new growth is. And then if we want to look at the most recent data that we have to work with, does still look like there's still some new growth on that northeastern section. Does look like there's a little on the southern edge, but I'm not sure if that's actually wildfire activity or if they're maybe just doing some backburns there to if those are actually intentional down there. What's clear though, most of the growth over the last couple days on this northeastern section. So if we want to zoom in here, this is the area that we were the most concerned about, which was all of these structures in here. When we look at another map, you can see that this is where the most structures are that were, I think, threatened by the oak fire but as you can see they've actually almost curved the fire around where most of those structures are located so that's pretty good to see if we want to see that another way this is the oak fire map the you can see where the perimeter is those little red stars represent where there's still some heat activity so the fire is by no means out we could also just see that on the satellite imagery here you can actually tell where that heat is still being picked up but the key part that we're looking at is on this northern section. Again, just because that red color is there doesn't mean that the fire is there. I'm actually going to back out because that's a little misleading. We can turn on the structures and you can see how they've curved the fire around where the majority of those structures are located. So that's actually exactly what we were hoping for because we knew that this fire was going to push towards the northeast. That was the predominant wind direction. That was the way the fire had been moving the last few days. And we saw all of these structures in here. We also knew that there was the Ferguson burn scar that would hopefully slow the fire down. As you can see, the fire did end up going into this burn scar a bit more than maybe anticipated. Sometimes you just see those fires bump into a burn scar and just stop in their tracks like a puzzle piece. What that maybe tells me is the Ferguson didn't clear out, didn't just completely burn out this area in 2018. Must have been some fuel left over if there was something for the Oak Fire to continue its growth on that section. But the key part is, is that the spot where we wanted, that we were the most worried about was we saw that where the Oak Fire was and where the Ferguson burn scar was, all those structures were right before that so they're in the path but as of right now it does look like the fire has been kind of curved around there and that's not a coincidence you can guarantee that's due to all the hard work that those 3,000 personnel were putting on this to protect lives and property so overall I'd say that's pretty good news right there we do still have some heat activity so the fire is by no means over we're still gonna keep an eye on it but 
it's looking a lot better than our last update. Now if we want to see the Wharf S Fire model simulation for the Oak Fire, this is the model that we run out of the San Jose State Fire Weather Research Laboratory. And throughout the day today, it was still forecasting some growth towards the northeast, but not as much as the model was forecasting in previous days. That shows that the model is doing somewhat well on this fire. And then if we look at where it's forecasting the growth moving forward tomorrow, it has a lot more growth on that northeastern section. But the key thing that I'll point out is that this model doesn't take into account firefighting operations. So that's where the model would be predicting growth if there were, there were no personnel on this, if it was only temperature, winds, humidity, fuel moisture, topography, winds, all that kind of stuff. I might have said winds twice there, but that's just because it's the most important thing. If, that, if those were the only factors involved, we maybe would see that much growth tomorrow. But the fact of the matter is we do have a lot of resources on that fire. So I'm not actually thinking that we'll burn all that much tomorrow. If anything, I think we'll burn less tomorrow than we did throughout the day today, which wasn't all that much. Now, when it comes to the fire weather forecast, I did want to start by showing this was our low relative humidity today. It was still dry, but remember in that imagery we looked at at the beginning, we had some clouds moving in over the Oak Fire. We could actually also see that on the satellite imagery. If I back it up here, then go back to the visible. It usually takes one second to load. The, the key thing that I'm pointing out here is that we had moisture moving into the state of California throughout the day today. And we did still have those dry conditions over the fire, but it at least wasn't the 9% relative humidity that we'd seen in some previous days. Now, let's just check out the fire weather forecast, see if that some of that moisture is gonna be sticking around. It's not in the single digits, so I guess we'll take that, but it's certainly still dry out there. 17% relative humidity, that's plenty, that's plenty dry to continue fire growth right there. Temperature is still very warm at 90 degrees, but then the important one that we've been looking at, winds still looking fairly strong on this one. Looks like it's coming from a more northwesterly direction than we'd seen in previous days. In previous days, it was coming from a more southwesterly direction. So we might have to keep our eye on this fire to see if it starts to push some of that activity down towards the southeast. And then also keep our eye on Jerseydale right there where it could try to push it down in there. But overall, given the updates that we've seen from Cal Fire, given the reduction in smoke, and the reduction in just fire activity in general, I would say this fire is definitely looking a lot better than it was in previous days. Now, speaking of smoke, we can just check out that air quality map. Today, some unhealthy for sensitive groups, that's that orange color there. This actually looks better than in previous days. Remember I mentioned that when we had that huge smoke plume, the Tahoe area was actually in that very unhealthy category. So it looks like that smoke and air quality has improved and similar conditions expected tomorrow, but that's kind of dependent on what the fire ends up doing. So overall, I would say Oak Fire looking a lot better than it has been in previous days with that said, with that being said, it's by no means over, but if there aren't any major changes, this may be my last forecast on the Oak Fire. So if you don't hear from me, no news is good news. But obviously, if something big does happen, I'll do another update on this fire to keep you all informed. So I hope this video was helpful and thanks for watching.